The purpose of this short video is to introduce you to the Web of Science. The Web of Science is a database of scientific articles that you're going to use during this global warming assignment. A scientific article is a paper or a report that a scientist has written and wants the world to know about. This particular database holds about 12,000 journals and that's about 50 million research papers. That's an awful lot of power at your fingertips, but it also means you can waste a lot of time searching this database inefficiently. So this video assumes that you've already looked at the library's iResearch tutorials on scholarly versus non-scholarly resources and on finding journal articles using databases. After you've watched this video, I recommend that you log into the Web of Science in the way that I'll show you and that you search for some things that you're interested in. After you've done that, you might want to work through the library's iResearch tutorial on searching faster, searching smarter in order to sharpen up those skills. So let's get going. From the university homepage, we're going to go into the library using the link at the top. And then from the library homepage, we want to use their databases and electronic resources link. Depending on what topic we're interested in, there's an awful lot of databases at our disposal. For this global warming assignment, we were interested in science and we're going to use the Web of Science. So the Web of Science can be accessed by searching by W at the top and then you'll see a link for Web of Science. If we're off campus, we're going to log in using our UniKey. If we're on campus, all we need to do is agree to use their resources in the way that they uh, require. And then we should log in straight on to the Web of Science itself. So you'll see that there's boxes to search by. And you can search by topic, you can search by author. If you know the journal or the publisher of the paper, you can put that in. You might want to, instead of putting a topic, you might want to put a title in. You might want to search by the year in which it's published. With 50 million articles, it's a good idea to narrow things down if you can by searching not by just general words, but by searching by perhaps a combination of topic and author. So, for example, if I put in global warming into the topic box, I'm going to get a huge number of scientific articles. I'm going to spend all night reading through and working out which ones are relevant. I happen to know that there's a Nobel Prize winning author on atmospheric chemistry called Paul Crutzen. So I'm going to put him in as an author. And so this will now only search for articles that contain the words global warming and were published by this particular scientist. And I've actually got myself a manageable amount. I've actually only got six papers out of that 50 million. So you'll see there's a list of the papers that have been published that meet those criteria. It also tells you which journals and which years those things were published in. So some were published fairly recently and some were published a few years ago. I want to go into this one in the middle, changing concentration, lifetime and climate forcing of atmospheric methane. That sounds interesting to me. So I click on the link. Then the database searches through and it gives me a page with a bit more information on this particular paper. It tells me which scientists were involved in the work, but most importantly it gives me an abstract. An abstract is a quick summary of what the paper is about. So instead of reading the whole paper, I can just read this summary and work out for myself if I want to read the whole paper or whether this is one that's actually not as interesting as I thought it was from the title. If I decide that it is an interesting paper, I can access the full text of the article, then the library would take me out into the journal, and from the journal I can read the abstract and I can get a PDF of the article. The PDF of the article I might decide to read on the screen, or I might decide to print out, depending on how interested I am in that article. So that's how we can access a particular paper. So let's go back into the Web of Science and see what else inf other information we can get. Now in the box on the right hand side, it says that this paper has been cited by 291 people. That means that this paper has been mentioned by 291 other papers since it was published. That means it's quite an important article. A lot of other scientists have found this relevant to their work. Those 291 papers were published after it, but were using results from this paper. So this gives me a good starting point to trace a story. So I can go into one of these other papers and find out how this particular story has been updated, 
how this particular story has panned out as the years have progressed. So I can access other articles that cite this paper. I can also search by related records, so it will look for similar words, and I can get myself very rapidly from a small beginning, I can get myself an awful lot of information without having to search the database um, randomly. Another good thing to search, if I go back to the paper that we found originally, is the references that this paper used. So this paper itself cited, mentioned other papers that had been published before it. So if I click on those references, I can also go in further into the database and look at the papers that this paper thought were important, things that were done prior to this. So it's quite a good idea to start over quite a modern paper and work backwards to trace the history and go all the way back to the initial ideas that padded that story out. And that's it. So I suggest that you now really go in and try it yourself. So go into the Web of Science. And in the search page, type topics that you're interested in. It might be global warming. Perhaps we're interested in atmospheric chemistry. Perhaps we're interested in carbon dioxide. If we combine those two things, we've got more of a chance of, of narrowing the field down. And we can go in and search and search and search and get more and more and more information, but in a fairly intelligent and fairly easy to use way and get the information that we want.